I told you never to come here. Very pretty. The bathing suit is nice, too. I'd, uh, like to see it with the cape off. It's so of me. May I be of any assistance? Oh, yes, perhaps you could be of some insistence. I'd like to see the bathing suit with the cape off, but the young lady seems a little shy. Oh, well, Miss Dugan probably misunderstood. The gentleman would like to see it without the cape. Mrs. Henderson, I refuse. This man didn't come here to buy anything. He's just sitting around for the free drinks and to see the Miss sight. Dugan! Well, I've never Please, heard. he doesn't have enough money to buy a pair of silk stockings. How much is the bathing suit? Uh, by, uh, uh, $79.50. I'll take it. Would you like a blank check? No, oh, for such a small amount. Uh, do you mind, uh, this $500 bill is the smallest I have? Oh, not at all. Shall we gift wrap the bathing suit? Yes, please. But it won't take a moment. I'll talk to you later, Miss Dugan. $500. Probably Confederate. It's quite real. It took me four months to save it. Of course, I could keep it in the bank, but it looks so impressive in one lump sum. Well, I hope you enjoyed your impressive afternoon. It's cost you $79.50 plus tax. I'd like you to have the bathing suit. You could wear it for me when we go to the seashore this summer. Let go of me, so help me, I'll keep it right in the shins. Tonight, at your place. I won't be there. They're wrapping it for you now, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. His name is Malcolm. Guy I met at a party about a month ago. Where was the party? At the zoo? <laughs> no, the aquarium. One dance with him and you'll find out he's the octopus. Brother, he's a collector's item. Why don't you ditch him? Did you ever try getting rid of a leech? He calls me five times a day. He follows me everywhere I go. Got any money? No. Have him arrested. Glory, do me a favor. Let me stay with you tonight. Honey, are you scared? No. I don't know. It, it's just that I'd like one night where I can feel free. One night where I can step outside without seeing him. And one morning where I can wake up without the telephone ringing, knowing that he just wants to have breakfast with me. Say, this guy has gotten into your skin. You'll find a nightgown in the second drawer from the top. All I have to do is find the key. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know where I live. Mm-hmm. I may be a little late. I got a date. Don't worry. We'll talk it all out tonight. Oh, good. Gee, I could go out the back way. Tell Mrs. Henderson I'm staying with you, so I'll get the call for tomorrow. Don't worry, honey. I'll take care of it. Thanks, Glory. Mrs. Henderson, I would deliver this person. Oh. You needn't be shy with me. Shy? You'd better learn the difference between shyness and disgust. I get you anything you want. I'm clever, Helen. If I had you, I could do anything. 
I could be whatever you want me to be. Oh. I love you. I've loved you from the first moment I saw you. Oh, I don't love you. Don't you understand? I don't love you. I don't want to see you again ever. Oh, no, be good to you. I need you. <laughs> I don't want you to laugh at me. I want you to marry me. Marry you? Why, I'd marry the first man I met in the street. I'd marry anyone before I'd marry you. <laughs> jury. You've just been tried and this is your sentence. He's getting away! Well, hello, Gloria. That's one o'clock in the morning. I know it. Well, I just thought I'd mention it. I've been watching television, a May Bush picture. Would you like to see it? Mike, the girl was just murdered in my apartment. the key to a friend of mine, Helen Dugan. I came home a few minutes ago. She'd been strangled with one of my stockings. Did he call the police? No. Mike, wait. The police are there by now. When I got in the cab, I heard the landlady yelling. Why were you in such a hurry to leave? I was scared, Mike. Of a dead girl or the cops? No. There was a man. He came out of the building as I was going in. He recognized me. Who was he? Some guy named Malcolm. But his first name or his last name? I don't know. I saw him at the store this afternoon. He came to see Helen. She was afraid of him. You think he's the man who killed her? Yes. And now he may kill me to keep me from talking. And you don't know his full name or where he lives? No. I don't know anything about him except that he murdered Helen. What does this man look like? He's fat and greasy. Gives you the creeps. How tall is he? Oh, about six feet. Weighs about 250 pounds. Dark hair. Wearing a dark blue suit. Mike! He's there! Across the street. He's waiting. Are you sure you saw him? Yeah, you must have followed me here. He's gone. Oh, my God, I'm not making it up. He was out there, watching, waiting. You're going to have to tell the police what you know about this man. The boys in blue will be very interested to hear your story. Cops, Mike. They ask the most embarrassing questions. It's a good thing you had the right answers, or you'd have been suspect number one instead of a witness. Mm. How are your nerves, Gloria? Oh, fine. We got to find this Malcolm before he finds you, right? Yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way. He's going to keep on hiding in doorways and lurking in shadows, waiting until you're alone. Yeah, well, he'll die of old age. You can't go through the rest of your life looking over your shoulder. No. If we can let Malcolm think you're alone, it might bring him out into the open. Oh, you mean I should sort of lure him out? 
That's the idea. Yeah, I saw it in a movie once. The girls try to lure the fellow out. Yeah? Didn't work. Nothing doing. You trust me, don't you, baby? Mm. What do you say? Okay, where do we start? At a delicatessen. Who's hungry? If we wash our hands and faces, we'll both be. It's breakfast time. Cream cheese and salami on a bagel. Make it two. Hey, Molly. Hello, Admiral. Gloria, meet the Admiral. Better known as little Louie. Happy to have you aboard, ma'am. Uh, Sit down. Louie was in the Navy during the war. Oh, really? Atlantic or Pacific? Brooklyn Navy Yard. Dry dock division. Hey, Felix, hurry up with the cream cheese and salami. How valuable is your time these days, Louie? In between jobs? I was mulling over and off just as you came in. Well, I've got a little proposition. I'll take it. Okay, Louie. I'll tell you what I want you to do. <laughs> Hi, Sam. Mike Barnett. Gloria, this is Longshot Sam. Hi, Dal. Hi. Mike, fate must have fingered you right to me. So help me, I'm standing here trying to figure out who I owe money to. And you show up. You don't owe me any money, Sam. Well, uh, I hope to have the opportunity. See, it's like this. My mother... Oh, sure, sure, I know. Your mother. Will two dollars help, Sam? That should do it. Hey, Maxie, I got the two bucks. My mother and the seven. Hey, Mike, you didn't come here to shoot pool. What's on your mind? I want to ask you a favor, Sam. Name it, my friend. Mike, where do you pick up all these characters? Oh, here and there. You ought to take some of them home and have them mounted. They're all good friends, Gloria. You can count on them. Come on, we got one more stop to make. All in readiness on the send. Over. Good boy, Louie. What's your phone number there? Okay, stand by till I call you. Aye, aye, sir. It is now $1,400. Over and out. Say, Sam, I gotta stick by the office here. Make me some cream cheese and salami. Mike, maybe he won't come back. You come back. Mike! <laughs> Hello, Louie. We're standing by for orders. Over. We've spotted him. Everybody ready? All hands on deck and manning battle stations. Okay, watch your step. No slips. Tell him the Navy is counting on him. Okay, Louis. Huh? Oh, yeah. Over and out. All right, baby. As Louis would say, this is H hour. Mike, I'm scared. I'm really scared. Just do exactly as I told you, and everything will be all right. Here. Here's the key to my car. Now, remember, go around the corner, get in my car, and gun her. He's there, I know it. You got the key to the car? Uh -huh. Remember, step on the gas and don't stop for any red lights. Meet me back here in five minutes. But suppose he follows me in a taxi. There isn't a taxi stand within five blocks of here. But suppose he gets Skip it. To... I'll wait here until you get a good lead on him. I'll see you back here in five minutes. Shall we make that our thought for today? <laughs>
Oh, Mike, that car key, I just couldn't find it. I was ready to scream. Relax, it's all over. From now on, you can leave your fat shadow to me. It's funny what you'll think of at a time like that. When I was walking down the street and he was following me, I was wondering what people would say if they saw me wearing an evening dress at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Louis? Mike, we know him. And get this, I go all the way uptown to your neighborhood. Then I follow him back downtown on the subway. And guess where the guy ends up? In a movie, two blocks from the delicatessen. In a movie? Make sure he doesn't leave till I get there. If he does, follow him. Don't worry, long shot Sam is watching the joint like it was a horse. Felix, cream cheese and salami. We're standing by for fighting the audience. Over! Just stand by your guns. We'll be right down. Oh, and uh, a well done to all hands. Aye, aye, sir. And by the way, if you want to talk to me, you'll have to call me. I run out of slugs. Over and out. Want to go to a movie? Well, I don't know what to wear. How about your evening dress? Now, why didn't I think about it? Tickets, please. Uh, uh, tickets. Your tickets. Official business. How old are you, Sonny? Forty-seven. can't walk in like this. We expect people to pay for their admissions. Pay for what? I seen the picture on the television last night. It stinks. Louis, Sam, check both aisles. See if you can spot them. Just who is it you're looking for, anyway? A man. A big man, a dark blue suit. Do you happen to see him come in or leave? There hasn't been anyone enter or leave this theater for the last 20 minutes, except the projectionist. The projectionist yes. left? <laughs> Louis said the picture stank. His relief man showed up. Oh, you mean a big man with a dark suit. Well, you must mean Malcolm. Does this lead to the projection booth? Well, yes, but now about all of these people that you've just brought in there here. Mike, Mike, be careful. All right, you guys, this is a stick-up, Shay. We're a little short for cash, so we're going to help ourselves. Anybody has any objections? You can speak to little Nero. That's me, Shay. No visitors, Ken. Come on, Malcolm. Sorry, friend, we've never met. Let's lay our cards on the table, Malcolm. You ought to be tired of hiding behind doorways by now. How did you find me? That's rather involved. I don't get your angle, chum. I got about 50 pounds on you. I can beat you to the pulp with my bare fists. If you come walking in here as though you've been invited to a Sunday school picnic. You ought to be smart enough to know the odds are against you, Malcolm. Oh, that's backwards. If I kill you, as I'm considering, the odds are against you. After you kill me, then you must kill Gloria. After Gloria, who's next? Whoever gets in my way. Now look, my little philosopher, there's one law of nature you seem to have forgotten. Self-preservation. Even a fat man will clutch at a straw. And I might sink, but I'll still clutch. I suppose you've got a gun? Why don't you find out? I will. No gun,
witnesses who killed Helen Dugan. They killed her. You strangled her? Yeah. Yeah, they all. Hey, if I had a bet on this fight, I'd have lost. Here, here, here. What's going on here? This is too much. Call the police and tell them to send a the wagon. Oh. In the bridge! Come on, Gloria. Go ahead. I want to see the end of the movie. <laughs>